So this is one, one big point is that we want the students to be not only aware of learning English, but we don't want to focus on the English per se. We want to focus on the content. We want to focus on what they're actually doing. So that it's not the, the creation of the article that's the most important. It's the process of doing the article. It's the process of evaluating the article. It's the process of uh, taking a tool, building a tool that you can use for something else. It's like taking, a, you want to build a house, so you make a hammer. So we want the students to make the hammer so that they can build the house. So they're, they're uh, creating the assessment criteria so that they can assess. On the other hand, they created the article that will be assessed. So in that sense, it's almost like a workplace where if they want to create a product or they want to create something for, the, for, for selling or for whatever they're going to do, then they've got the process of creation and assessment inside of the company, for example and then finally a release of a product or whatnot. So the learning life skills, as well as the English. Um, well, actually, Mark and I, we've been working on classes together for a number of years at different universities, and a lot of our ideas match. And when we've started doing, uh, using Moodle and started using the workshop last year and, and everything, we, we sometimes get the s same students in the second year or the third year classes, you know, doing another class. And we easily recognize uh, through these processes that these students really do have an advantage or they're just, you know, that much faster to pick things up with what we're doing. So I actually have seen, just as an observation, that these skills that they're actually learning are carrying over into other subject areas. And we teach a lot of English which are content-based subjects. So we're actually starting to see evidence that you know they're actually learning something and it carries over into something else. Well, time is learning. Yeah, exactly. yeah that's exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. Learning how to learn. Yeah. So learning how to work with the other students. So we're seeing a lot more uh, collaboration in class where students aren't afraid to say to somebody else, but I need this information, do you have it? Or I have this information, do you need it? So the students are actually trying to the past are actually now collaborating more in class. They're more open and they're more willing to do this kind of thing. Whereas um, other classes that we had, we have for the first time, <coughs> more in tune to, 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 to be the regular class that you have always encountered. Yeah. It's just great, like in this second year, and you do the third year chemistry uh, uh, content lesson. When you say do something, they just do it. Because <laughs> they, they know that, hey, we've got to do it. When he says three minutes, you've got three minutes. And they know, this, they know the process, they understand the system. for our questions. Ah, uh, okay. Well, I'll cut your part open as if you want. <laughs> no, you, you have not. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's the back side of the hand. Uh, do, do we have Do we have permission then for if we can upload this? Okay. Yes? Uh, a minor question. Uh, when you're doing the rubrics, um, you have the criteria of, let's say, for example, um, information. Yes. And then under that, you have like uh, subdivisions, accuracy, amount, and other things. Do students actually rate each subdivision or only the big criteria? Well, inside of the content, mm -hmm. in each, each subdivision, the students, what they did was they said, okay, inside content, we should look at this. And then you'll see inside of the, um, the uh, individual areas, that they've actually commented on, it, on each element of that. So if it says uh, English, there will be some sort of comment in here about the English. Or if it says about layout, there will be some sort of comment throughout that says layout. So they do focus on each individual. Yes, to answer your question. But, it, but it's not individual. They don't click for each subdivision no. separately. No, you mean you could do that, but your rubric should be massive.
Yes. So I missed the first half because I was doing my own presentation, but it, I don't know whether you spoke about, I mean, it's peer assessment, but do you also talk about group work? Because I see some of, you've got McConnell as a, he, he writes about working in groups. Um, so did you refer to issues of people working in groups as well? Actually, that's, that's the flip side of peer that's assessment. The side, but the, the McConnell is actually, uh, he talks about a lot of assessment and peer assessment in, in a lot of his literature. Right. So, um, but mostly group peer assessment. Right. So that's the, that's what that's his book. But we didn't, we didn't focus too much on the groups uh, in our presentation. Actually, this, uh, we, we wrote a paper on this and we submitted it to Joel. Would it be possible to have the students submit as a group within workshop? If um, so, three people, one piece of work, and then yes, yeah. we thought of it. But I think at the very early stage, you, you, you can. They don't get the same. I mean, yeah. you could wait to work differently afterwards, but right. initially they don't get the same. same. Uh, and one point nine, I think that was more open. In this case, it's not so much. One point nine, you could actually go in there and individually grade a student based yes. on. The amount of work that you thought they had put into that one article, right? As a, but as a group, um, but they would still be a part of that group. But in this case here, um, I don't. Think